Hey everybody, Chris here from Varsity Gaming. So today I'm going to be doing a different type of video, something I've never done before, and that is a Q&A. The reason why I'm doing this is because about a month ago the sponsorship program was opened up on my channel. I applied for the beta and they accepted me. And with that I had to give perks, one of those perks being that sponsors could ask me questions that I would answer on a monthly basis in a Q&A format. So today I'm just going to go through a bunch of sponsors' questions and give you guys answers. So our first question comes from InfiniteJ asking, What is your favorite thing to do outside of games and YouTube? So for this, I have two answers. One, if I'm in the mood to be alone, then usually I'll just go upstairs and watch Netflix for a couple hours and just binge watch series. My number one go-to being The Office. And then my other favorite thing to do is that if I'm in the mood to be around people, then I like to go play board games with my friends. It's a really great way to relax and unwind without having to look at a screen. Since I spend arguably about 80% of my time awake staring at a screen, it's really great to go play with something that uses your actual hands and brain instead of using a mouse and keyboard and screen. It's also great to get away from video games and YouTube in general. Although I love it, I love doing what I do, everyone needs a break. Alright, question number two. In advance, sorry if I butcher any names because I'm pretty bad at pronouncing them. But this question comes from, I believe it's pronounced Akshat. When will you play with YouTube sponsors like you do with Twitch subscribers? And will there be a sponsor title in the Discord for your sponsors? So this is a really good question because a lot of people have been asking why they should sponsor on YouTube instead of subbing on Twitch because they're pretty much the same price but they do come with different benefits. Now the reason why I can't offer the same benefits for YouTube sponsors that I can for Twitch subs is because of how the systems are made. For the Discord thing, unfortunately Discord does not support YouTube sponsors yet, as far as I'm aware. They have a natural integration with Twitch that will automatically link all subscribers so I don't have to do anything manually. However, there's no option for YouTube as far as I've seen. As far as playing with sponsors like I do with Twitch subs, that one's also a little tricky. The main reason being that I only stream on Twitch. And when I'm on Twitch, it's very easy to tell who's a subscriber and who's not. So if someone sponsors on YouTube and then goes over to Twitch, I have no way to know that they're actually a sponsor. So unfortunately, it's just not as easy as it would be on Twitch. I can try to work on something in the future where we can get YouTube sponsors in some games, but that'll take some figuring out once the sponsorship program is much more fleshed out. And our third and fourth question come from EDM Chill Step. Number three being, what game settings do you suggest? This one's more of a personal approach because I don't really know what everyone's computers can run, so... Uh, Question three being, what game settings do you suggest? This one's more of personal choice. A lot, a lot of people tend to run the game on the very lowest settings with medium shadows just because that gives them the best advantage. I personally would always prefer to play the game on the highest settings possible, but unfortunately my computer doesn't allow for that because I've had some issues in the past so I have to run it on medium. I believe my settings right now for the game is everything on medium. And question four being, what operators do you suggest for noobs to use? I'd say this one kind of depends on what your experience is like on PC gaming, especially for FPSs. When Rob and Drew got the game, I pretty much made them only play Rook and Sledge. The reason for this is because those operators are super easy to understand and their gadgets just make sense. However, they also had very little experience with FPSs on PC, especially tactical ones. Most of their experience came from like Call of Duty or Battlefield. And then someone like Peter joined where he has a few thousand hours on CSGO, so he is a lot more renowned when it comes to FPSs. He started playing with Rook as well, but then he quickly went on to other fast roaming operators. So if you have very, very little experience with FPSs, then choose operators that don't require a lot of teamwork and know-how. Basic ones on attack being Sledge and Ash, and then ones on defense being Rook and Mute. Moving on to question number 5 from the Castrillion Vlogs, can you do a video on how to be a better player on Rainbow Six Siege? This one's kind of tough to answer because it's fairly broad. There's not really just one or two things that you can do to become just a better player. Siege is a game that takes a lot, a lot of hours to get good at. I mean, I've been playing this game since closed beta, and I only really started getting good at the game in Dustline, which was about six months after launch. Before that, I was in silver and gold lobbies the entire time. So I guess that's pretty much the answer on how to get good, is just put in the time. And I can't really make a video on that because it's so abstract and also different for every single person. Right now, my Siege School is aimed to try to help you guys learn this. I'm trying to break huge core segments of the game into tiny little videos. And hopefully after watching all of that, you can actually learn how to get better. Unfortunately, that's the best way I can explain it in a short answer. And our sixth question comes from Andrea. She asks, if you could be remembered for just one thing, what would you like to be remembered for? I've re-recorded this answer like 10 different times trying to find a good way to phrase the question without sounding conceited or anything like that. And my final answer will just be, I would like to be remembered for the channel. Because I want to use the channel as a stepping stone to go and do some good for the world. Whether that be charity work or other improvements, I don't really want to get into it. But if I'm going to do stuff like that, I don't want to go out seeking recognition for charitable stuff I do. 
I'd rather be remembered for something that helped me get there, which would be YouTube. In the future, without YouTube, I likely wouldn't be able to do the stuff that I want to do, so I'd rather be remembered for YouTube than anything else. Hopefully that made a shred of sense. Our seventh question is another one from InfiniteJ asking, what is your favorite attack and defense operator? Usually I have a top list of three from each side because it is fairly hard to choose between them. But if I had to, had to decide, I'd probably say my number one favorite defender is Doc, and my favorite attacker is probably Hibana. First, Doc, because I think his gun is absolutely amazing, and I personally think he's a better pick over Rook in almost every situation. However, I know a lot, a lot of people will probably disagree with me on that. And also just because I love anchoring. Anchoring is probably my favorite role to do on defense because, well, I'm okay at it. I'm not that good at roaming, so anchoring by default is probably my better choice. And then, like I said, my favorite operator for attack is probably Hibana. I think the reason why I chose Hibana is because I kind of fit the IGL role in a sense. I am not necessarily the best shot on the team. There's a lot of people in our group that are probably way better at shooting than I'll ever be. However, I think I excel when it comes to strategizing and formulating a plan. And that's what Hibana is really good at because she's all about destruction and poking into rooms. And our next two questions come from Jack. Number eight being, do you have any ideas for new operators who could be interesting? This is something I get asked on an almost daily basis on Twitch, and in all the times I've been asked, I have not been able to come up with a good answer once. I have a lot of respect for the people at Ubisoft who have to come up with all these operator ideas because I would never be able to come up with any of them. Even though I am a fairly artsy person, especially with all the video and animation I do, I am not that creative, especially when it comes to actual stuff that will be implemented into a game. I may critique them a lot on balancing, but actual creativity of the ideas, they have that. I have nothing. So sorry I can't answer that question. And question number nine being, I'm trying to get two of my friends into Siege and explain the game has proven to be quite difficult. Any advice? I've taught this game to a couple friends, the two main ones being Rob and Drew that you've seen in the noob videos. The only advice I can really give is to let them explore. Don't try to force knowledge on them. Whenever I introduce someone to the game, really the only thing I'll tell them to do is choose a specific operator, usually that one being Rook. But everything else in game, I just let them go and discover, and then I'll explain along the way. Because when you try throwing a ton of information at someone, it's going to be really hard for them to process it all. Unless they're incredibly interested in learning all that compressed information. So yeah, just let them explore on their own, and they'll get the hang of it. Explain little concepts along the way, and if anything happens where they get confused, try to explain why something happened the way it did. So yeah, basically patience, and don't force all the information on their throat. Those are my two pieces of advice for you. And our tenth question is another one from Akshat. For context, this was his third question asked, but his second question was similar to another one where they were asking for my top favorite operators. But anyways, can you stream on both Twitch and YouTube together and merge their chats? There's probably a lot of you who don't know this, but about a year ago, I used to stream on YouTube instead of Twitch. I started streaming on YouTube back in, I th believe it was either February or March 2016. And I streamed solely on YouTube up until about, I think it was August of 2016. And then I decided to stream on both websites, Twitch and YouTube. YouTube continued to grow, but Twitch had very little growth at all. I think the YouTube streams averaged about 100 viewers, and Twitch streams would average about 2 or 3. And then in April of 2017, I decided to completely abandon YouTube streaming and go just on Twitch. And the reason why I decided to do this is because of the adpocalypse that happened back on YouTube around that time. I decided it wasn't safe to keep all my eggs in one basket, and if I kept streaming on both YouTube and Twitch, people would only watch on YouTube because they were already subscribed to the channel. So what would be the point of going over to Twitch? So because of that, I decided to keep them completely separate. Twitch will be just for streaming, YouTube will be just for videos. And honestly, I kind of prefer it this way. This way, if one fails, I have the other one as a backup. So unfortunately, no, I can't come back to stream on YouTube and Twitch. And the 11th question, another one from Andrea being, what job would you be absolutely horrible at? Hands down, I would be horrible at teaching. I would never be able to get through a full day of teaching. This might be a bit surprising to you because a lot of you have said that you've learned a decent amount from my Siege School videos, but that is completely different than actually teaching people. I cannot tell you how impatient and how much of an asshole I can be when someone's trying to get me to teach them something. It's different when I'm trying to teach my friends how to play a game, because that's fun, we laugh at how stupid they are, and we move on. But if it were a situation like me trying to teach a kid how to do math and they just don't get it, I would probably blow my brains out. I actually have a story about this. My sister has never been able to figure out how to do percentages, and she's three years older than me. She never figured it out. 
Every year, I try to spend some time and try to teach her percentages. She still has not been able to figure out, and every single year, I lose my mind. Because to me, it makes sense. Percentages are easy. How does it not make sense to her? However, obviously, everyone is different. Not everyone is able to learn at the same pace or even grasp other concepts. So if you ever wanted me to be absolutely horrible at a job, put me in a teaching position. I will blow my brains out by the end of the day. And that's it for the sponsor questions. However, I am going to include a few additional questions from the community. The reason why I'm doing this is because this is my first ever Q&A, so I want to give the whole community a chance to ask me some questions. I chose the top few from the post, and I'm going to go through them. However, this will not be a thing in the future. In the future, they will be only sponsor questions. So if you ever want to get one of your questions answered, then make sure to sponsor the channel. Like I said, the button's either below the video or on the channel page. Let's move on to the community questions. I was originally only going to answer three questions, but I decided to add in four because this one's kind of a joke one. So the first one being from Kevin Shaw asking, On a scale of maple syrup to free healthcare, how Canadian are you? To answer this seriously, I'd argue I'm not the most Canadian. Although I do love my maple syrup and my free healthcare, I don't have a lot of the normal quirks that a normal Canadian person does. And as far as I've been able to tell, I don't really have much of the accent. However, other people have said that it kind of leaks out at random moments. I think the main reason I lack a lot of Canadianness is because I was raised in a Hispanic household. My parents spoke only Spanish, and I always answered in English, so I didn't really pick up any Canadian accents or any Canadian terms, really. Almost all the terms I learned were from American TV. So I'd argue I'm not very Canadian. So moving on to the more serious community questions, the most upvoted one being from, I don't know how to pronounce this, Protea Mamma Mia, <laughs> being maps that I want to be put into the ranked matchmaking and maps that I want removed. If I had to choose, I think the two maps that I would remove from ranked would probably be Cafe and Clubhouse. Cafe I just hate on the overall because I think it is a very linear map and has way too many windows. I just don't like it. And Clubhouse kind of being for the same reason, it's also very linear. Both of these maps play out almost the exact same way every single time. There's really no change to the strategy. I'd argue at least on other maps you have multiple different strategies and usually each match is at least somewhat different. And as far as maps go that have been removed from rank to be put back in, there really aren't any. All the maps that were removed, I would 100% agree, were completely unbalanced. If I had to choose one, it'd probably be here for base. Although, that one kind of had the same issue that I mentioned with Cafe and Clubhouse, that it plays out the exact same way every single time. And the second most upvoted community question comes from Don't Read My Profile Picture saying, What tips can you give for silver to gold people who are playing solo? So this is something I wish I could delve a lot more into, but unfortunately I haven't really played in the silver gold league for quite a while. When I was doing my solo smurf placements, I really only was in the silver gold lobbies for I think three matches, and then I had enough MMR, even when I wasn't ranked yet, I had enough ghost MMR that I was already put into plat lobbies. But my number one advice would just be communication. When I first started this game, I was one of those people that was so afraid of talking in-game. And if you go back to my really old videos, you can completely tell. There were a lot of times where I would just say nothing for almost the entire match. And then if you don't talk and no one else talks, everyone's just going to be silent for the entire game. So usually the first thing I do now when I'm playing on my Soul Smurf account is go into a lobby and say, Mikes, 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 and just hopefully someone responds. If no one responds at all, then there's not much you can do. At least you put in the effort. But hey, if someone does respond, that means you at least have communication on your team and someone willing to talk. And if you're in silver and gold, and if you're communicating, then you probably already have a leg up on the enemy team who's probably not communicating at all. And then our last question of the entire video comes from Talkative Techie asking, if you could ban two operators, nerf two operators, and buff two operators, who would they be and why? So first part of the question, ban two operators. Right off the bat, Ash and Ella. Get them out of there. Although I do play a lot of Ash, I completely agree that she's pretty broken. They've tried to fix her over time, but there's so many times where I swear I hit her right in the head, and I even look at the footage, and it looks like I'm aiming right at her head. Nothing happens. And Ella for the obvious reason being that she's completely overpowered. So that feeds into the next question, nerf two operators, number one being Ella. Nerf the shit out of her. She is way too powerful still, even with her 40 bullets. And for the second operator to nerf, I wouldn't nerf Ash, because it's not necessarily a problem with her kit. She's not overpowered, it's just that she has issues. Her hitbox, her speed, all of that is just a bit too much. As far as nerfing another operator, I'm finding it really hard to choose one. Just looking at the list of operators, a lot of the operators that come to mind thinking, oh, they should get nerfed, it's not necessarily that they're too powerful, it's just that I find them really annoying to play against. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're too strong. I guess if I had to absolutely choose someone to be nerfed, I'd maybe say Buck. The only thing I would nerf of his is his skeleton key. 
in almost every situation, he's just a better sledge. Which, my big problem with that is just power creep. Quick explanation for those who don't know is basically where new releases, like new operators, are just older operators but better. But they cost more, so it's a way for companies to make money. By trying to sell you a more expensive operator who's just better than a previous cheaper one. That's really the only operator I could say maybe to nerf. And then for buffing two operators, the first one I want to see buffed is IQ. One buff that I'd like IQ to get, that I got off just the top of my head, would be when you're scanning with your gadget, and you see an electronic device that you can aim down sight with your pistol, aim at it through the gadget, and then ping it, and the ping will go to where the gadget is, instead of pinging the wall right in front of you that you're looking through. Because I think that would be an awesome way to coordinate with a team and to destroy gadgets. Or even to know where, like, say, a pulse or vigil is because you can see their gadget. I don't really think that would be too overpowered, but I'd be open to discussion on that, because I think that would be a really good buff towards IQ. And then another buff, probably to Capitao. They say they're going to buff him in the future, but I think right now, even though his gun got buffed a bit and his utility is pretty decent, he still lacks just something. Everything he does, other people can do better. When it comes to smokes, people can just use smoke grenades. ADSs really aren't that big of an issue. When it comes to using firebolts to zone places out, someone with a gun can do the same thing. So yeah, I'd say Capitao for a buff. I'm not entirely sure what it would entail, but just buff him in general. Alright, and that'll be it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. Let me know if you want to see more like this, and also, if you want to ask questions, I will plug this one more time. Sponsor the channel. It's a really good way to support the channel and make sure I can keep making the content that you want to see, and it also lets you be included in stuff like this. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.